action. All right, people, action. Here we are. So here's the deal. I got no name for this podcast. I built this studio uh, for my mother's weight loss clinic here in Livingston. Uh, she runs a fantastic business here. So I made this for her to get her you know, business out to the world because my thesis is if nobody knows you, they can't do business with you. So I built a studio. Uh, we might as well, you know, give it some uh, more action and get these athletes on and they could talk about their history, what they've been through in the process, how the uh, how the process goes, the struggles, you know, along the road. And uh, we'll we'll take a deep dive into uh, their life um, to the left of me here. I got my brother, Nikolai Bujnowski. How are we? And to the right of me, I got Will. And Will, I need some help on uh, your last name here. Wilfried Benet. And as you guys could uh, could hear, uh, Will is from France. Bonjour. Bonjour. S'il vous plaît. <laughs> um, so, you know, the intention of this podcast here is, you know, if you have, you know, kids, a son, a daughter playing sports, you'll hear firsthand the experiences that these guys go through. I mean, they're playing at Virginia Tech, the highest level of football which is awesome, unbelievable accomplishment. Uh, my brother, Nikolai, here, he's a center for Virginia Tech, and then Will's a tight end, believe it or not. He's a big boy. He can move. Um, he's a dual threat, which is unbelievable for VT. They got an unbelievable season ahead. I'm excited for them, and uh, we'll take a deep dive right now. So, uh, Nikolai, give us a, uh, a little rundown on how you know, school was coming up. We'll, t we'll start at Montclair Cobras. We'll talk Oops. about Don Bosco a little bit. Yeah. Talk about uh, PC, Paramus Catholic, and uh, explain the process and how it went. So, I used to play for Verona, <clears throat> but since there is a weight limit there and I uh, didn't meet those requirements, I had to go and play in Montclair. Uh, I first, well, you, you had a quarterback coach, Leon Clark. Leon, shout out Leon Clark. Unbelievable QB coach. He actually showed me the Cobras, and uh, I went to a practice and fell in love. I met uh, a bunch of great people. One of my best friends is actually from the Cobras. Uh, Jose Diaz. Jose Diaz. We'll, we'll have him on eventually. He's up in uh, upstate New York right now on a farm. Yeah. Uh, you know, herding cattle. God knows what he's doing up there. So that was fun. Uh, we got to eventually make it to the national stage in Florida. Uh, that was really fun. Paid by who again? Bill Belichick. That's right. That's pretty darn cool. You know, so cool. so for the people listening, I mean, this is the caliber of middle school football. You have Bill Belichick, arguably the best NFL coach, flying these kids out to Florida. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. Which is insane. Carry yeah. on, sorry. That was a lot. That was actually probably the most fun I've ever had in football. I met a bunch of great people. Kyle, that's one of my good friends. Shout out Kyle. Another sh big shout out, Kyle Manon guy. I mean, that's a football dynasty and a half. Yeah. Uh, his brother being Kevin Manon guy, starter for Villanova. He started all four years, right? He was a demon. He was an absolute beast. Had a stint with the NFL, you know, bounced around from a couple teams with the Eagles. But uh, unbelievable family, to say the least. Yeah, and then uh, I went to Don Bosco Prep into high school. Uh, I went there for – I w played football there for three years. And then the off season, my junior year, in the spring, I transferred to Paramus Catholic. Um, I went to Prem's Catholic. It was it's a great it's a it's a cool school. You know, I was getting used to it. I didn't really like you know it's different because you you join high school <clears throat> and everyone doesn't know anyone. So true when you start. So it's weird knowing that like you know cliques and groups are already formed, <clears throat> and then you kind of just join in. That was kind of hard, but I knew Jose, so that was cool. But then you know meeting people, they were also awesome, so it was kind of easy to adjust. Well, I mean, that, that's sports. I mean, yeah, exactly. every, uh, the, oh, the whole, everyone's vision, everyone's aligned. Yeah. They're all looking to win. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it, it's, if you want to play sports, you make friends pretty darn quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I went to Prams Catholic for my last year of football. We actually played down Bosco. Oh, that was a pretty fun game. Yeah. A lot, a lot of chirping. Yeah. But, but, uh, but how was the process of, of going through these schools? Because like I said, the people listening, the parents listening, you know, they don't really understand the process and the time and effort that goes into these athletics. Um, you know, it's just, so I, your experience and from what I saw you coming up, the, the Bosco regimen, the workout regimen, the summer workouts, even at PC, it, it's like a college program. Well, yeah. So I actually, so the first two years I played baseball, so I didn't really get to really experience that. Off I forgot about that. <laughs> so I didn't really experience, you know, the the real brutal summers and all that. And 
going into my junior year, I tore my knee. And so, yeah, I, again, I didn't really, like, experience all that. And I the environment there, I love the people there. The people are awesome. But there was just a couple people that, uh, you know, didn't resonate with me as well. And I, I kind of – it made me at one point – Wanted me to stop playing football, but I was like, Dude, "That's come on, that's pointless." And and to give a little background on this too, I mean, we Don Bosco. When I say we, it was Don Bosco. We had the arguably the best high school football coach to ever exist, and Coach yeah, Toll, Greg Toll, he's probably the best. I mean, high school coach ever. Greg Toll, for the people who don't know and the people who are listening, he was the first high school football coach. Um, this was back in I guess mid two thousands, early two thousands, yeah. to say that my team here in Jersey could go out and beat any other team in, in the country. Yeah. And that's what they did. Yeah. So from 06, 07, 09, 2010, they, they were an South. absolute powerhouse. Yeah, we, yeah, they were an awesome. absolute powerhouse. And I, I get chills thinking about that because, you know, when it comes to sports, it's, it's war. And you, and you guys could attest yeah. this. It's absolute war. So to say that my crew could go out to different states down to Florida, Texas, California, some of the best football, and smack these teams from yeah. little old New Jersey is... It's ridiculous. It's crazy. unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And so, yeah, I went to uh, I went to PC. Um, I love the coaches there. Coach Nova is actually from Bosco. so he Another great quarterback, too, coming up in high yeah, school. Yeah, he, he's awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, once football ended, I kind of didn't know my direction. I was kind of just speaking to, you know, great, you know, D2, D3, some low-level D1s. And uh, I kind of – it's, like, weird because it's, like, you work – all this time and then you're just you're kind of just like not stranded but you kind of just don't know what's going to happen and a uh, weird story i was uh, driving to training and i get a twitter notification oh, yeah. <laughs> from zach sparber and i've heard of him because i went to some like monmouth camps and he was there because vt and monmouth did a camp well he was from bergen catholic first yeah, that's, yeah, that's where he, he found at bergen and stuff so i and i see i get a a, a message from him but i didn't know like really who he was at the time and i look over to jose i'm like I was like, who's Zach? And I'm like, <laughs> and he's like, isn't that the coach from VT? My eyes lit up. I, I said, screw the GPS. I got off on the first <laughs> exit. I was like, I don't care if we're late. I pull off, and I text him back right away. I actually didn't hear from him. Remember? He, he went. I didn't hear from him. It was weird because, yeah, he went MIA for a little bit. So Ooh. that's where I pulled out my role. Dex was like, I got to get this kid's number. Yeah, so. That, that was a, a Twitter DM too, right? Twitter, yeah. So yeah. I had you reach out to one of your good friends who knows yeah. him. And I got his actual cell. And the kid was on vacation too. I was blowing up his phone. He got back to me like a day later. He's like, sorry, bro. I've been away, but uh, here's his number. Yeah. So as soon as I got I, I shot it right over to you. So I texted him. He finally got back. <clears throat> and it's just crazy. It's just like. The, I remember the last school I talked to was King's College. It was a D3 in New York. Then the next text I get is from Virginia Tech. It's so weird. It's, like, really weird. I'll never forget the uh, the time that when you called me. You FaceTimed me. Yeah, I was. And you were just, like, white as a ghost. You were like, holy shit, this yeah, is happening. It was ridiculous. It was the craziest moment of my life. And then, well, they set up a. So, I guess Sparber reached out. He went cold for a day. We got, I got his phone for number. a day? It was, like, two days. It was weird. It was, like, a week. Was you wait long? for a week? It was like a week. He texted me. He was like, uh, how would you feel about walking on? And I uh -huh. was like, I, I, yeah, I did that. You. Yeah, so. Yeah, w yeah, it was that long. You're right. You're right. It was a long time. Yeah, so, yeah, we got his number. Then So then they set up a phone call for after those after school that day. It was like a half day or something. Oh, yeah. And then, oh, that yeah, that reminded me. So yeah. it was, yeah, so we texted, we texted, and then he was like, call me. He was like, when is your school day in? And I told him, and he was like, all right, call me at this time. I had AP psych my last period every day. Yep. And I, when I tell you I bolted out of that classroom, <laughs> like I lit, like bolted to my car. I go in my car, I lock it so no one can – I can't hit like – I had to make sure this was perfect. Nervous, and I call him, and it, we just talk, we talk. And, I'm, and I, I kind of – like I throw out the question because like, I didn't know if it was like a PWO. But like, yeah, he told me it was, and I, I, I don't even, I can't even remember what happened. It was I a was like, blur. What the hell? It was, a, and then you called me right after. Yeah, it was so. You were away as a ghost, and you were speechless. <laughs> yeah, that's good. But that was a uh, awesome experience. I mean, yeah. you deserve it. It's, listen, it's a long road. Like I, like I've been saying, 
again, people don't understand this process. It's it's That's an, a long process. It, it's a military regimen schedule, so especially at a young age. Military. Yeah, it's not going to compare, but it's the closest thing to the military. That's why they say yeah. RVT. Yeah, like that's what Coach Fuente said to us. Yeah, exactly. Ex- yeah. Yes, it's like the war every day. It's a it's a war every day. It's but, but your you brothers, can't, you can't but you can compare yeah, you because you die. No, for that's not war. Fair. no, no. It's it's. I don't want to. You know, I love the military. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, say that football is harder, but you have that atmosphere. Yeah. Some um, mornings it feels like it. The, the mentality. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Some mornings you you wake, you, the feet touch the floor, and you're like, do I like this? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's you, on. You're just like, oh, I probably stop play football. Yeah. 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 yeah, but you now, but that was you know. Listen, awesome experience. I want to talk about Will's experience because I never even heard of this happening to a yeah from you, internationally. Yeah, it's crazy. You're an international student. To, yeah, not 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 a foreign exchange, right? Because it's high school. Yeah, so, I played in high school. Yeah. So correct me if I'm wrong. You were over in France. Yeah. You came here your senior year. Yeah. You played. He played seven games, and got picked up by VT. Exactly. Crazy. Which is insane. <laughs> because you got to understand the process. It, it, these coaches know you even like in eighth grade. Yeah. Could these these coaches. I want to speak about that talent. too because I've met, but I want to let them speak. But, uh, yeah. So you come over here, play seven games. You're playing tight end, right? Yeah. You're tight end, like, DN. Tight end, DN, going mm-hmm. both ways. Yeah. And then you got to call like the seventh game, like that week around. So, yeah, it was weird. Like, so I get like some. So I came here. Really for my junior year, but like because I came late, mm-hmm. like uh, October, so I didn't play all the season, um, and so I do like the showcase stuff yeah. like that. So some coach show up, and so I I show my skill. Yeah, I show I can move, I show I can catch, uh, I show I'm strong dudes. So I was like, okay. After they text me, some coach offer me some low division one like Monmouth, Secret Heart. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Rhode Island so all this low division one school offer me just like by see me uh, at the showcase yeah um, but after like some big division one like Michigan Virginia Tech uh, Michigan States uh, all these big school say uh, we have to see you in game yeah so my senior year I play and I start in both sides like offense and defense tight end and DN and and I was like trash talking on Twitter, like say, yo, this kid have Alabama offer. I just do two sacks on his face today. I love it. And I love so it. I was like trash talking like that. And at the end, like, I think he was like, yeah, close to my last game, I think. Like we play like San Francisco Academy, mm-hmm. uh, who was in school where I've been. Uh, that's a long story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll say that for another time. Yeah. Um, so we play San Francisco. The coach from VT was here, uh, and I make like two sacks. Uh, I didn't catch the ball at this time. They didn't throw me, but like he said, ah, we love you. They, they saw it already. Yeah, they saw like they saw and me like play against a big school. Yeah, and they see okay. And th- that's one thing with these guys, these coaches. They know. They see the talent. Yeah. They they see what's there. Yeah. Right Where like like the parents' eye, they don't see it. Um, it, it's kind of like you know going back to Don Bosco real quick with with Jalen and Kyle. Yeah. Kyle was unbelievable. He's he's a freak of uh, of nature. He's Shout unbelievable. And then you look at Jalen. Jalen had a great high school career. Yeah. Um, and you see Jalen go because he had the size. He was six three, ran like a deer. Yeah. Um. But now you see him at Wisconsin. Now he's scoring touchdowns left and right as a true freshman. Ridiculous. So these these guys know what they're looking at. Exactly. Um, like when the coach like from. Virginia Tech. So after like the coach see me one time, two times at the game. So they came in my high school, yeah. see me in person. So I have like the tight end coach. I, I have Coach Wente. Yeah. I have yeah. all like the coach seeing stuff came to my high school and see me and like check my hands, check my knee, check my calf, check like everything. <laughs> like they were like, I, they, they go like, turn around. Okay. Okay. You have good side. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. So they check everything. And now this crazy. is this is what kind of kill it, kid Will is. Now VT offered you first. Uh, right? So like I have like first he was like low division one school who well, offered but like me. big time like like but big yeah time like for was, was VT big big town yeah it was VT. That's so so you you were meant for VT like you were meant for the for the, like the top twenty five NCAA schools you yeah. knew that yeah 
Um, but then you had the other offers from Michigan. So after like all the schools say we don't have any more scholarship right now because they already give like every scholarship yeah. for 2020. Yeah. So for the class of 2020. So they say wait for the second signing day and yeah. we might be have some offer for you. But yeah. I, like I prefer like I don't like maybe. Like if you say maybe to me, I'm like, ah, I mean, they, they don't know if they're gonna to offer me or not. Yeah. VT yeah. like they didn't care. They they was like the first big one who say we like these kids. We like his story. We like what he did. We like how he looked like. So I say so ah, they trust me. So I have to trust them. So now in France though, there's not much American football there, right? Not a did lot. Did you come? From France playing football? Yeah, I, I was did. playing. I started to play football at 14, 15 years old. 14, 15, which technically here is late in America, in the States. Oh, uh, yeah, it's yeah a little late. Because I mean, 14, now, 15, I mean, you're, you're about to enter. It's weird because like now parents are like, oh, concussion this, concussion that. So you'll see yeah. actually a lot of people join kind of late. Yeah, but I mean, you look at Texas, Florida, you know, these oh, kids, are kids are playing coming out of the womb with the helmet on. They're, they're cracking skulls already. Yeah. Um, but that's an awesome. I, I, I before the podcast we were just chit chatting. There's, mm. I, I can't think of one French, NFL player. No, nah, it's like, so we have like some guys who like try. So one guy, Anthony Maungu, who play like for Purdue mm-hmm. University. Um, so he, he was a free agent, but after like the summer camp, he be cut. Yeah. Uh, so. Because you have the same side, the same like start of all the players, but like because he wasn't like he was a free agent, so and he was from France, so I don't know he wasn't like on the roster anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I have to prove I can be maybe the first French drafted. That's awesome. That'd be sick. That that's awesome. Yeah. And listen, from an outsider looking in, seeing <coughs> Will play, I mean he's got everything. He's got the size. He can move. So it's going to be unbelievable watching play these next couple of years. Um, schedule is already out for VT. Yeah. Um, we open up September. Uh, we like I'm part of the program here. Uh, September third, right? Yep. Yep. North Carolina. North, North Carolina. Carolina. North Carolina. And then <laughs> NDs at home this year. I think so. I think so too. We'll I'm, I didn't even on. take a deep look at it honestly. Oh, I did. Last year we I'm played. Already, I'm already setting things up already. <laughs> yeah, be, I think this year is home because yeah. last year we play North Carolina. No, you're talking about uh, the ND game. The oh, Notre Dame. Oh, I, Notre I can't Dame. wait for that. Those home games. Yeah, I think, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, that's gonna Enter be Sandman. Be How was I mean, we had a COVID year this year, so it wasn't like the stadiums were packed. I remember it was that friends was and weird. family, right? Yeah. That was very weird. We had like, what, 2,000 people in the stands. I mean, the stadium fits 80,000 people. 2,000 looked like nothing. Mm-hmm. It was basically like a high school game. It was like, like a high like school a lower game. lower end high school game. Yeah, exactly. And then... Then we ventured into what six, seven thousand people. Then they started getting bigger. Why well, you can't even tell? Two you to, couldn't two even to tell. Six yeah. Is, yeah. And then because that's including the other team too, I think. Yeah, and also and they sit up high. It, they, yeah, they put them up high, yeah. which is hysterical. It's so funny. The, the wind's hitting them. It's freezing Dude, cold, and we're down by the field. Yeah, so like we. Have I don't think like they even put the lights on up there for them. <laughs> I think they were like in the dark. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember, but that was weird. That's it. But I, I can't even imagine because they would play Enter Sandman and just imagining 80,000 people. I've seen videos of it. I couldn't imagine firsthand what it's like. I, they say that the, the floor, the, the ground actually shakes. Shake, yeah. I believe We have the craziest fan, fan for the ACC. They oh, say. They're, they're insane. And then they play in the fourth quarter, they play Shout. That, that's underrated. I think that's... That's underrated. That might be better than Whoa. Enter Sandman. I, I honestly, being being in the stands and hearing that. But here's the thing, you have an experience in Sandman. Mm-hmm. That's also true. So I I don't know yet. I mean, there's no way it. But you are no, right. It is underrated. No, yeah, it's so underrated. They have Will Ferrell come on. You know I couldn't stop know. laughing. But uh, I'm I'm excited for you guys this year. It's going to be awesome to see. I mean, hopefully they're saying twenty thousand you know fans in the stands this year. Hopefully it's it's more come you know september so we'll see yeah um how has it been so far i mean you guys are technically off right now but yep. you know i'm seeing videos of you guys you know pushing a thousand pound sleds so you guys aren't really off yeah, it's not really off and it's awesome to see it too because again i'm an outsider looking in this process um i haven't seen pictures of you from high school but you from just a year ago till now your body has completely tr- just transformed yeah i was like 230 two years ago 
Yeah, you were. Yeah, two third. Yeah, were you? No, you three had years. My three years ago. Yeah, because well, my sophomore to junior, year, I was like uh, junior. Year, I don't know what I played at junior. Year. Probably like two sixty. Two sixty. Now I want to touch upon this real quick. How different? I know. I know we have a buddy. Shout out uh, Frankie Ferrari from uh, from Colgate. He tests you all the time on the playbook. Yeah. And being from Bosco in these private schools, you pr- you pretty you know you know the schemes already in high school. Yeah, it's just it, the only thing that's different is the actual what they call the play and like the verbiage. The verbiage is, yeah. is a little different. Yeah. yeah. It, but it, from every school. Every school. They're West Coast, just, East Coast. They're just trying to they're trying to relay the same message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But now the depth of the playbook has to be a lot more, right? Like there's there's more schemes at this level. Yeah. Oh, Speci- uh, oh, go like, ahead. Yeah. Especially for me, like a tight end, yeah. It's tough for you. It's tough because, like, you know, you have to know, like, every, like, running, running games, like, if it's a run, if it's a pass. So I have to know if I block on the line, off the line, if I have a rot, so I have to catch a ball. Uh, no, nah, that's a lot. Like, in high school, I have, like, what, 10 plays, <laughs> maybe 20. <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. to know. So it was easy. Here? At I, I, I take holy, <laughs> oh, no. Now, from what I see, the two toughest positions on the line. Technically, you're you're a lineman. Technically, right? Can we say that? Or I mean, s- skill like uh, this. Yeah, it's like, because because practice wise, you guys hybrid. join the line. Like you a tight end is a yeah. hybrid. Like he is a between like a receiver and an O line. Yeah. And at the same time, take use as a running back too. Yeah. Like they can kill, we is can kill some, the ball. Yeah, they're in the backfield a lot too. So yeah, That's we're on two point states. Like so That's insane. We have to know like three different positions. Like, That's like a tough. receiver, a tight end on the line, a tight end off the line, and a edge back back. Now now th- what's the speed difference here from high school? Like it's super, super, super quick, right? Compared to high school? Honestly, like no. You don't really? No. Because I mean, I my junior year, I played. I want to say against. So every so every game, I did not not go against a three star. True, true. We played Joe's. That kid went to Ohio State, right? There's Ohio State. Well, uh, yeah. Wasn't there what the n- nose guard? He was Ohio well, State. No, he was Notre Dame. Notre Dame, okay. Then it was like Penn State, Notre Dame, Brown at the time, yeah. and then Penn State. So, I mean, and also kind of like your body just, like, takes over. It's so weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If, uh, I just remember, like, maybe me. Because it's it's like that war mentality. It's like, like, like it's on. Like because yeah, it's like, we, like, because the play is called, and it's like, I don't want to be the one that messes up. So, it's like, I got to So, I you have to be good. It. True, mm-hmm. true. So, it's like. And you know, like, you're recording, too. Exactly. So, you know, like, everyone, like, every other position can see you fail. Yeah. Yeah, that's the weird part. So that's a weird part because like after they can talk to you in the back. Like now, but yeah, like the first time you play, it's gonna be, it's gonna feel different. But once you're five plays in, it's like, yeah, all right, and we'll get played. Now, okay, yeah. now I had this conversation last year around this time with Plaxico Barris. I said, "What's the difference from uh, Michigan State to the NFL to the league?" And he says, "There is a difference. It's a lot quicker." And he and he was telling me that you never really get used to the speed. Really. He was saying that, you know, being a rookie, like, the ball snaps and it's on. Like, everybody is just, you're talking about the top of the top. And the playbook's much different. Playbook's tough to know. Yeah, I don't and and he was saying that Eli, he's like, he would call um, audibles that we were calling back in week three, you know, week 11, that we haven't practiced in, in, in months. And you have yeah. to know that. Yeah, now VT is pretty much the same thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like for me, tight end, like yeah. they add like some play we didn't like work like I don't know, two for two weeks, and they add it the next day. Yeah. So you have to remember everything, and every day, every practice, every week, they add some new play too. So and you, you have, have to remember, remember everything. Everything. Your that, roles, everything. That's why I hate when people say football players are so stupid. Yeah, like football you, is not you like guys gotta be intelligent. Defense players are like yes, defense. D- yeah, <laughs> D- defense is like like a crash course. Yeah. Like like how hard can I hit this guy? Exactly. Like I mean, I wouldn't say that. Some I, you have to be smart. I think from too. the physical standpoint, I think DB is probably one of the hardest. D- DB physically is is the hard. I think but in all sports, from mental, mentally wise, uh, 
I don't know. How Even much like like linebackers. Like how much can you tell a D lineman to do? <laughs> that's that's true. They have that's they have true. two gaps. You're yeah, trying to pick apart someone's weaknesses. And stunts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but Plaque also told me that, you know, I I, I might cut this out later on, but he said that when um, David Tyree you caught that pass in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. He said he ran the wrong route. <laughs> he said that he should not have been there. Now, granted, Eli was scrambling for how many seconds? So God knows yeah, where yeah. receivers were ending mm-hmm. up. But he said that he was not supposed to be in that spot. That's but <laughs> it happened, and, you know, he scored the last touchdown. Plasco scored the last touchdown. They won. So Nikolai, being a, my brother being a Patriot fan, that was uh, – a great that moment. Was a terrible night. He was a, a young kid then. He went upstairs in his closet and cried for a good six hours, <laughs> in in his in his Patriots jersey. As Dude. I'm downstairs going <laughs> insane, crazy. <laughs> it was bad. I don't, you didn't go to school the next day. No. You you. <laughs> it was that bad. So Dude. pissed. So like like in France though, like is sports this crazy? Like soccer, yeah. Soccer, soccer yeah. Like, yeah. Soccer, soccer, we have yeah. like some crazy fan, fan, Yeah. Like on the stadium, if you go in Paris. Like, they have lights, they have, like, oh, no, that's, no. Yeah, yeah you guys are actually like crazier some, with soccer some, over there. Yeah, sometimes, like, they fight, it sh- like, <laughs> one t- like, they fend from one team to the other. In Paris, most of the time is in Paris. After when they go out, they fight. Say, nah, that's crazy. Like, yeah. they take the bus, like, the car of the I other team. I mean, they'll kill a player there if they screw up. Oh, they don't care. Like, I s- <laughs> no, I, 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 I swear, like, they take some rock and throw it to the bus. Like, sometimes the bus, like, the window is break. That's their culture there. Uh, they care that they live and breathe soccer there. Yeah. yeah. Where here it's it's I mean it's somewhat it's more it's definitely more civil here I would say I mean mm-hmm. we're not killing you know. I oh, but that, after that is only like the crazy people like we call them the extremists. Yeah. yeah. Like the extremist fan act like this. So after guys, you have like the regular. Real fan. quick, I just want to take a quick short break. I want to make sure the cameras are uh, still live here. And uh, we'll take a uh, five-minute intermission, and we'll come right back. Back to the streets. Yeah, so, I mean, going back to our conversation, yeah, soccer over there is insane, to say the least. Um, Here in the States, you know, football here gets crazy. I mean, Eagles fans, like Dave Portnoy says, they're scumbags, but I love them. Yeah. I mean, they really are scumbags. (laughs) They just just live and breathe the Eagles. It's like almost like they hate themselves. Because like if the Eagles are losing, like they just uh, they have themselves. They they just explode. Mm-hmm. Um, One thing I do want to say, because I said the D line, I made it sound like it was easy. It's not easy at all. It's kind of like haunting me. Just like, I didn't want no, no, just no, just put the microphone a little bit closer. And I didn't want to like have someone watch it. No, we know <laughs> what you meant. We know what you meant. No, I know it was on my mind. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you can start the beef. But uh, yeah, like that's what we say in France too. Like we say in France, like defense is dumb. I mean, we had Man. Will over here shouting out kids on Twitter saying he's going to Alabama, and I put his face in the in the dirt twice. Well, I mean, that's different. That's just that's yeah, talking true. About it. That's talking about one. Per- I mean, if he was trash, he was trash. <laughs> true, true. Here's what I want to touch upon. I want to touch upon, you know, obviously, like I said before, the coaches there, there meaning top level, top tier D one, they could they could spot the talent. But how often do I they disagree. get it wrong? A lot. They get it wrong a lot. Yeah. Especially about the size of people. They judge a lot the, about now, the size. Y- yes, the size, I, I definitely agree with that. I will There's never some understand the process of how it works. There's yeah. no, like, formula. No. Yeah, because you look at, um, let's, let's talk about the Ivy Leagues for a second. I mean, Yale only has a certain amount, like for a line, let's say. They only want 6'3 or 6'4 and above, and nobody under, right? Yeah, they walked into high, my high school, and they were like, if you're under 6'4", we don't want to talk to you. And now how's, and like, how's their record? I, mean, I, I don't care about you. No, no, I'm just saying how's their record? Is they're they not good. good. Oh, they're trash? I think, I, right? Nah, I, I mean, can we, uh, I'll look this up right now. Shout out Tyler Diano. He's on the L. I, I, I love Tyler. But I have no idea what the record is. Well, honestly, I've, I've heard from Tyler that the outsiders, that if you're not a part of football at Yale, they don't like Yale. Like, their, their weight room is connected to, like, the rec center. Like, they don't like football there. Really? Yeah. They don't. Their weight room is actually really nice, though. Let's see, record. Because that's heavy league, so Ivy yeah. League is more, like, for school. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. They don't really care about f- sports. Never mind. I take that back. Maybe I'm talking about the wrong team here because <laughs> they went 9-1. <laughs> Listen, I, I know a couple kids at Yale. Don't, don't kill me. Um, Hard to 
So, so like Dartmouth though, do, like Dartmouth doesn't play a playoff, right? Mm-mm. They just play like the regular season and they just pack it in. Or I'm sorry, is, is, is it Harvard I'm, I'm thinking about where they just said 6-4? That was Yale that said that. But for, I mean, a lot of, uh, if you're like, if there's a D1 school, they're really Or only, Brown. They're really only, like if Lyman was, they don't, there's really no one that's like, you'll get a couple kids that are like, you know, 6-1. Six, hey, six I'm sorry, go off topic real quick. Brown, how do you go zero and five at home? You got, you couldn't get one. <laughs> you couldn't get one. That's bad. Like like, what's going on there? Their coach was talking to me, but uh, they said they yeah. Forget what they mm, screw, screw Princeton, down. Princeton t- talked to me. They said yeah. I have to have a good SAT. Princeton's good football. Uh, after my first year, yeah, but like <laughs> I didn't speak English. Yeah, <laughs> I just speak English uh, my, si se- my senior year. <laughs> I started to learn English my senior year, so I was like, my what? <laughs> my SAT? Yeah. You're sure. A, you're a smart <laughs> dude because, again, going back to the playbook, you, you have to know the ins and outs, and you mm-hmm. also learned a second language here. Yeah. How would you learn? Just just by listening to people talk? Yeah. Listen to, li- listen to people talk, watch movies. Uh, I download... What kind of movies are we talking about? English, everything. What's your favorite American movie? If you had to pick one. Or top three. Uh, yo, that hard. It's hard. Are are the movies here better than overseas? Like we like honestly, the movie we watch in the US here. is ex- yeah, they from here. It's gotta oh, just true. be in French. It's, it's just yeah, in French. True. So we just watch American movies. Yeah. All right. We all have right. some French movie too. I mean, what? But like they're not that big. They like some, some win some Oscar like uh, awards, but not a lot. Like yeah, I could get Steven Spielberg in France. Yeah, he's a director, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure for that. I forgot. But um, yeah, going back to the Ivy League. I mean, we had a nice time this weekend too, right, boys? We went to uh, shout out New Jersey Devils AHL team. We had a nice little party at uh, Jeremy Brodor's house. Yeah, mm-hmm. really we had a good time, right? Yeah. They're uh, it's it's cool because you know the hockey guys they're athletes to the core, but they're not like football players. Like you guys are so different. Uh, I feel like there's like a um like a rivalry between the two sports. Like, do you guys get along with the hockey guys at VT? Do you guys even cross paths? Because I feel like at every school, these, the, like... I don't know if you have, like, hockey... Do we even, do yeah, do we even have a... Ho- yeah, there's no hockey no, team. I don't. No, I think there is. I think they have because sometimes I see some I think people, I do but, see like, but, yeah. I don't know. Because, co- like, everywhere, like, I don't know. Because, like, like, for us to just, like, go out of our way and be like, yeah, like, hockey guys, just hang out, it's like... Weird. Yeah, because I see like at some schools, like the football team and the basketball team, they get along. Sometimes they room together. Uh, Maybe because no, no I, not attack. I at least I don't want yeah. To. Well, I mean, also too. I mean, we're talking about a school that's like th- th- this is a big time program. Like it, mm-hmm. it's not the you, you you can't say VT and these schools are like a uh, like a D two school. You know what I mean? Because I mean, uh, uh, deep like where Jose goes, that's elite football. That is a that lot is good of the football. Kids that, that go there can compete at this level. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. But I feel like like sport group wise, mm. there's some people that get along, and there's some people that don't. For yeah. example, I have friends, I won't mention his name, but uh, he went to Princeton. <coughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, like like they clash with like the football team. Do they really? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I'm like, you know. And again, too, like hockey guys are also very, very tough guys. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like, it's just I think put it this way: there's a lot of testosterone in the I room. I think it's, a, I think it's a lot about like what, like I don't know. I feel like each sport is trying to figure out like what's harder and what's like. Yeah, to try to say, yeah, and my my sport is more tougher than your sport. Yeah, but it's yeah. different. Every sport is different. So yeah. So another thing too, I want to you know talk about real quick. You guys off the field are very tame, nice people. And a lot of the guys that I know that play at the highest level are the same way. Mm. But as soon as their foot goes in between those lines, they are completely different people. I realized that with you, your sophomore, junior year, that you, you were a completely different person on the field oh, you than, than off the field. You mind like... Honestly, no. My sophomore, junior year, I was a baby. Sophomore, you were a baby. That, that, your first game, you started sophomore year. Freshman, you were playing JV. 
sophomore year, you had the first start against Seton Hall. Seton Hall, yeah. But honestly, like, and then, no. then, then I think I had something to do with. I just no. Or the, really, our family had something to do with Kyle coming there because you guys played against Kyle. That yeah, no, because no, honestly, like I just didn't enjoy football at all. The first two years. My sophomore, no, I swear to God, like that. When I said before I was gonna quit, yeah, like, it's just like the environment was just like weird for me. So like I didn't enjoy it. But and then like my, but that, that's my when senior, Toll left. That's when I like. Toll left uh, or right well, around no, there. It had nothing to do with Toll. No, but what I'm saying is, like, for a kid to say, well, like, what you're saying and, and playing at VT, that there's something wrong in the process, whether it's coaches, the environment, or the environment that the coaches made. Because I'm not here to put anyone on blast, but, you know, we had coaches and people that came through Bosco that couldn't, you know, compete with Coach Toll. Mm-hmm. Like, like, when, like, when it's same thing with business. Like, when a business guy walks in the room, you know, and he, if you're, like, if you're not a veteran in business, you shut the uh, – can we curse on this? We could curse on this. You shut the fuck up. When like like a real business guy walks in the room because there's nothing you could tell him that he, that he doesn't know. already know. It's, and Toll was the same way. Like, when Toll walked on the football field, you, your head was snapping. You just you listen to him. Yeah. You, you you capture the kid's attention, and I think that environment's um, built a lot better for players. Mm-hmm. Now, when you have a coach, kind of like to be honest, not to get political, but you know when you have um, leadership that's weak, yeah, you have chaos. That's what happens. You look yeah. at any other country too, same thing. If you have weak leadership, it's absolute chaos. Mm-hmm. So you, you need a, an alpha male to lead the pack. Yeah. Um, and sometimes that alpha male is not in, it, it, he's not in the war, so to speak, yeah. meaning a head coach. He's, he's played the game. I mean, look at all your coaches at VT. I mean, you have Coach Vice. He, was at, he played at the highest level. All these guys, <clears throat> they're playing at the highest level at some point. So yeah. they're taking their experiences and they're bringing it there. Mm-hmm. So it's not like a kid... I mean, you have these, you know, once in a lifetime athletes who walk through that are just studs and yeah. you just see that, you know, right off the bat. But for the majority of these kids, they have to have someone to look up to. Like I, like I always say, and I heard, I don't know who it was. It was, uh, I don't know if it was um, Parcells or Saban, but he's like, you know, I have, I have 65 sons. Yeah. And then like you're a father figure for these kids. Yeah. Also too talking about football, a lot of these kids that come through these programs, they come from a broken family. Mm-hmm. We and we all heard these stories before. So, you know, having that father figure and it, it's it, the kids look up to these people. They they look up to these coaches, which is huge. And that's why sports is so big. Yeah. Um and you know, not to get, you know, in depth with all this stuff, but I find it great. So that's why when I see like a coach that can't control his team, um and in Kids say, I, I want to quit. Something's going on. Something's not right. Do well, you guys agree? Well, yeah. yeah. But, uh, like, the thing that sucked about transferring was, like, I had so many great bonds with, like, people there. Yeah. At Bosco. And it's just, like, it kind of, it made, like, myself, it kind of was like, oh, I'm just dishing them. But, like, there was, like, a deeper meaning behind it. And it's kind of weird because it was like, oh. Because they're from there. I know from their point of view, it was like. Oh, you're just leaving us? Yeah. Like, that's how it is? Mm-hmm. But that's what but I'm that's saying. Like, like it's like even like harder to leave at that point. So, so that what I'm saying is there's another outside force that's driving that that's even bigger than your relationships there. Yeah. That's a problem. Um, and listen, at Bosco, you had Kyle, you had Jalen, you had, you, we had weapons. Watching Kyle and Jalen play, have you ever seen them play? No. It, it, it's unbelievable. Like I get chills thinking about like probably, Kyle scoring five touchdowns. It's some probably games. Probably the best running back duo ever. ever. Like at, I, and you know we have family member like Connor Wojak, Alex. Like I've seen them play at Seton Hall. That's when Seton Hall was on top when when Connor was there. Um, Kevin was so this is Kyle's brother was playing with Connor Wojak at Seton Hall. Yeah. He, he was a running back. Kevin was great. There wasn't a backfield like Kyle and Jalen. We re- we had like, what do we have like six or eight rushing touchdowns or five hundred yards yeah, in a Will game? Will was insane. In insane one game. <laughs> I feel like bro, last play, one of the last plays of the game. This is how I know they were. Just put a little closer, so they go. We get to the line quick, and I didn't know the play. And I'm like, I hope it's on one because if it's not, it's a false start. I snap it. And as a center, there's nobody to ask. No one. Like like you're the well, quarterback of the know. line exactly. So it's like. I, and I'm like, what's the play? I'm like, I j- I'm just going to go hit the first person. <laughs> 60, it was like a 40-yard touchdown. Yeah. Kyle. And I'm like, you know, Jalen. Oh, Jalen? I'm like, but I mean, they're good. Like, yeah. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah. It was weird. No, but I mean, well, 
I love watching these two play. I mean, we were just missing some pieces to our offense. Um, you know, we had a new coach. He was a younger guy. Um, but all in all, I don't think we'll ever, for the next 20 years, see a, a backfield like this. It was just every play. And these kids could catch, too. It wasn't like they were running backs mm-hmm. that couldn't catch anything. They were athletic. I mean, Kyle Jaylen Wright. was playing receiver. Jalen was playing receiver someplace. Didn't they put him at cornerback someplace? Yeah. Was he playing defense? Wildcat. So at at this level at Wait, Bosco, what? was he playing corner? Was he a, uh, oh, it a, was a like defense? Oh, it was like one game, yeah, I think. Which is hard to do at this level. Like, like the, So, like, you can't compare. I mean, you have the group five schools here in Jersey, which are big time, Montclair, Clifton. They're, they're good schools. Yeah, all right. But nothing compares to the private school football. Yeah, no. no you can't. It's just, it's a, it's a different animal. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, watching these guys play, it's, it, that's what high school football is all about because – like, when we had the ESPN game, so our rival was Bergen Catholic, when those games happened, how many people were coming? Over 10,000 people? More than that. More than that? Was it 15,000, 20,000 people? ESPN came yeah. for the games? Just know if you weren't the first person there, you're not going to You're not going to see. see. You're not going to see. And it's, it's also cool to see because being here in New Jersey, we're, out, we're right outside of New York City. Phil Sims is at the game. You have all these, you know, ex-alums who play at the highest level. It's full of just talent all over the place. And that's why... I was talking to um, the reporter from, uh, from Twitter. We were talking about uh, New Jersey football and how, how we produce some of the best athletes, not just football, just in general, mm-hmm. just a little old New Jersey. A lot that get missed. A lot that, a lot that get missed. But, I mean, we produced so many great athletes. I could go on and on and on. And that's why I can't believe, I mean, Rutgers, we got, you know, Shiano's back now. So you, there, there's an uptick. But Rutgers should be a powerhouse because of just the sheer athletes that were coming out of yeah. here. I mean, the first guy that comes to mind who's one of the best tight ends in the league right now is David Njoku, Cedar Grove kid. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, like, I, how does Rutgers let that kid go? Yeah. I mean, uh, granted, he went down to the U, and you know it's nice down there, and you can't beat the weather and the yeah, atmosphere, I'm so, but I'm sorry, but if I have to go to the U or Rutgers, true, that's so true, crazy. true. But do you th- do you think if if Rutgers was a winning organization or a winning team with Shiano, he's going to Rutgers? Thousand. We, um, I I mean I think a lot of the problem was Ash, Coach Ash. Yeah. Okay. But um, because we I, we trained with someone that went to Rutgers, mm-hmm. and uh, he was just saying how you know. It was just wasn't the greatest. So I mean, like, yeah. I think that has a big factor to play into it. Yeah, like, and like when even you chose a college, you tr- you try to see like which coach, if the coach is good, yeah, everything. So, because when you're th- yeah, like when you're that high of a recruit, you want to be coached by someone who know exactly what well, he's. This is my point going back to five minutes ago about having that alpha leader. Well, you know, because it's yeah. hard to be like it's hard for a Rutgers coach to come up to you after a two and eleven season and go, yes, oh. We're gonna be good next year. Yeah, but it's like that's just speculation. Mm-hmm. You can go Owen whatever ne- the following year. So it's like that's why the recruiting process is so big because you have a kid like Will who comes from France, plays seven games, and saw the talent already. But you you have to be able to do that. I mean, a big again, part. I don't want to you know keep breaking balls here, but Brown. I mean, two and eight. Who are we recruiting here? But uh, there's also some kids from other international places that aren't the greatest. True. Yeah. True. And Very true. I, I mean, I know a few. Yeah, yeah. True. But um, I want to touch upon one more thing too, and I can't remember what it was. Um, that's why oh, it's oh, crazy oh, for oh, him Minka, to be good. Minka. Oh, he's from St. Peter's. Like, like, there's, there's so I, I can name you ten fantastic athletes that came out of New Jersey that, that didn't even think about Rutgers, which is a sin because it's the same thing with professional sports here. I'm dying. I mean, the Knicks just made the playoffs for the first time since what 2013. Like, at, crazy. Like the Rangers. Like. I'm more of a Devils fan now, granted, you know, because of, of Jeremy. You know, he's Jeremy and Jake have me watching hockey. They talk about hockey all the time, so it's like mm-hmm. a different language to me. So if I want to chime in with these conversations, I got to learn a little bit. So I'm reading, you know, Moskov and, you know, all these different <laughs> names and guys who play over in Sweden. And shit. I, I have no idea. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just – it's it's a shame to see because, like, I want to see the Rangers do well. I want to see the Yankees on top again. I can't watch baseball anymore. I don't know if you've watched baseball or football. Like, I can't watch baseball anymore. I don't know what it is. Because growing up, you know, 
was born in 97, watching the 2000 team, 01, 02, 03. You weren't even born yet. No. You weren't even born yet either. Watching, 2000, yeah. Like, watching these 2000. teams play, I could name you everybody on the roster. And, like, the team and the atmosphere was just different in New York. And I, I wish to see that again. I, I miss the old Yankee Stadium. The old Yankee Stadium was tremendous, in my eyes. Yeah, no, like, like not, you, you had a... Come back. The, the, but, like, the Yankees had... Same thing with Fenway, same thing with Wrigley. I mean, these are some of the last places, Babe Ruth, Mickey, you know, they were in those batter's box. That's what baseball is about. Baseball is about the history, about the, you know, about the game. So when they built the new Yankee Stadium with all restaurants and different suites and stuff, mm-hmm. I, I, I would walk around the stadium and, and see people not even worrying about the game, which is, which is crazy to me because the old Yankee Stadium, I'll never forget the first time I laid eyes on the field. I'll yeah. never forget it. I was a young kid. Crazy. And just just the whole atmosphere of everything is completely gone. They completely destroy it. So that's why I can't watch baseball anymore. That's why I like watching you guys, you know, in high school, seeing you guys come up, because it's a cool. Like there's there's a story behind it. Now I feel like it's all. I'm a business guy. Like I like I love business. I love studying business. But when it comes to sports and stuff, that's where I, I draw the line. Well, Do you guys it, agree? Yeah, but I think it dies out because it's like people. Like, the parents are like, oh, my son's the greatest at baseball. And then when they get thrown into left field and he's, yeah. and he's yeah. picking flowers and he's not doing anything, yeah. he's like, mommy, I'm bored. That, and then they go play yeah. lacrosse. Th- mm-hmm. That's another thing I want to talk about, too. I want to talk about Will with this because I know your background inside and out. Um, like, like, were your parents crazy about sports? Like, were they on top of you nonstop about sports? So that's weird because, like, in France, we're not that crazy about sports. Like, like the your family is not like you gotta do this, we gotta no, buy you this, nothing no. like that, right? Okay. It's like very like you because first mm-hmm. in France you have school, like we don't have a lot of time after school. Yeah. Like we start school at eight a.m. and finish most of the time around like four five p.m. Oh, so you have like no. and you have two hour breaks, yeah. like twelve to two, yeah. or twelve or an hour and a half. Yep. So France is very about school first. Yeah. Like, if you go in school in France, say, still the teacher say, oh, you have to go in school, uh, go in school, go in uh, college, yeah. and after try f- to find a f- good job. Yeah. That's f- I'd always disagree with that because you don't have to go in school for make a lot of money or have, have right. a good job. So, but that, so you have like, yeah, to go to school every day, every day, every day. And so you have like maybe like a window of like two hour where you have to add sports. Yeah. But you finish school at 4 or 5 p.m. Yeah. So most of the time, sports start at 6, 7. So 6, 7. So that means we have two hours sports. So you finish by 8, 9, and you have to do homework for the next day. Yeah. So, so that's not a lot. So, so you have your parents on top of you, and you have the teachers on top of you for school work. Exactly. So S- here in the States... I'm sure you saw, you know, or see and hear about a little bit. The parents here are f- fucking crazy. How about sport? hey, yeah. sports? I mean, every every kid here is, is the next Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I get, I don't, I'm not a father yet. You know, that's <laughs> way down the road. But I can't picture myself acting like some of the parents here because yeah, that's the first it's just thing crazy. I s- when I came in U.S. Because my mom, like, like she'd never be on my back for school like yeah. that much but like she was care about school like if i have bad grade she'd be like yo you have to like have better grade let's go but after like she know i love sports so she let me do a lot of sports um but the first thing i see when i came here in us that parents the parents act different when the kids do some sports and especially with football yeah. like you see all the parents came like screaming like let's go and i was like she's a mom <laughs> yeah damn that yeah that was gonna lead into my uh my thing when i met so me and jose were at crunch in verona working out yeah and we saw our old moncler Cobras coach yeah and he's telling me that these kids are like dressing up in the gear for the high school that they visited and or are committed to yeah so that's already and started. I'm like, well, you're ruining. I, I can't even imagine what's going to be in 10 years. I, I, like mm. in 10 years from now, I don't know what's going to happen. It, I really don't. It's retarded. I, I see kids who don't even play sports saying committed in their bio on Instagram. Like, like, like if you play a sport, you put committed. Fifth to eighth grade was the best time of football. Yeah, because 
Epi- so but now they're making it like a uh, like a, like Jose said. It's like another job. It doesn't even make sense. It, it puts a lot of stress. In the, I mean, and, listen. And to play a sport, it's it's stressful enough being in front of people trying to perform, and you're adding on outside stresses, which should not even be happening because the the kids that I know that play at the highest level, and I know quite a few people that you know played in the league, whether football, baseball, hockey, whatever it is. They're not on top of their kids like some parents are. It's crazy. I don't know if it's just like an insecurity or whatever it is, but let the friggin' kid play. Like, I, like I'll, I'll give you some examples. I don't want to drop any names, but there's some fathers that I know that play at the highest level, and they're nowhere near crazy about their kids, yeah, about playing yeah. sports. And they, they probably wouldn't even care if they dropped out of playing a sport. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Um, I think that, you know, kids at a young age should, should pick the sport that they want. Granted, yep. listen, you, you have some kid like I, I follow Sean Avery all the time, hockey player. Um, and he, uh, listen, he has a son, you know, who's, I don't know, three years old or with the hockey stick and whatnot. Stuff like that's fine. But going crazy, emailing coaches, writing letters, all this other bullshit. Mm-hmm. Doesn't that's anyone work? Do, <laughs> like, like our father, for instance, workaholic. Uh, he's tame most of the time. I mean, we have a grandfather who still holds a record for strikeouts for Notre Dame. Yeah. So we, we come from a, a – we have a whole bunch of different family members who played at, at high levels and, and whatnot, but they're, they're not crazy, like screaming in, in the stands. Mm-hmm. I also take some blame for screaming in the stands because being at your games at that level watching – you know, you, well, no, you, you tailgate and have some fun, whatever. It's different. Like cheering someone on is yeah. different, but like, like parents are literally parents are like saying. screaming at their kids for like. <laughs> yeah. I played a baseball game. I was about to bring this up. I played a baseball game. I'm. Like, what are we in seventh? The shortstop. Sixth grade? Oh no, I had to get a Bosco. I want to talk about, but carry on. Oh yeah, he gets like he he messes up like a ground or he strikes out whatever it was. The and the and the his dad was the head coach of that baseball team, and he yelled at him. To the point where we had to call the cops. Are you... T- during... No, no. During the game. And I'm like, first of all, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, wh- what did you do for you to yell at him? Yeah. And I'm like, we have to stop the game because cops need... Like... It's what? <laughs> craziness. I want to talk about... Th- I thought you were going to bring up the story at Bosco, the shortstop kid playing JV. Is So, at Bosco, not only are these kids... Creme la- Here's a French word for you. Creme la creme. Did I say that right? Creme, yeah. Do we say creme? Was it creme la creme here? Like, 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 like the top creme of the top. La creme, creme. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I don't know. know. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, I feel like I'm gonna get punched by Will. Um, <laughs> there's also a lot of money at these schools. Uh-huh. For, for example, you guys built that new uh, facility at Bosco right in the oh middle. God. It's like a 13 million dollar facility. Jeez. They called up two or three people within like 14 hours. The money was already, you know, in an account ready to uh, start construction. So. Nick Lai's playing JV. Now I remember you playing baseball. I was, went to a couple games. It was more of football for you. Not really so much baseball. But you were still fantastic at baseball, but you shined in football. The shortstop for this JV team, the father did something in finance. He bought this twenty-five dollars or $30,000 machine, and the kid would wear wristbands and would calculate his velocity, speed, and everything else. The, the father would put, like, this mechanism. It was like a uh, storm detector with, like, the spinny thing. <laughs> and he would record the history. Like, first of all, granted, this kid was not going anywhere. You could, I, I don't need a freaking $30,000 machine to tell you, listen, we need fucking help here. Or he's got to find <laughs> something else. But, like, I, like I, I don't mean to be rude or anything, but, like, what are we doing? At what point? Like, like even if I had a billion dollars, I'm not buying something for 30000 strapping on my kid. I look like a fucking moron around these parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like, oh, where's dad? Oh, he's in the outfield. See that little friggin' spinny thing? Yeah, he's calculating that for little Jeffrey. <laughs> yeah, no, parents here are so extra. Like, some parents at football game when I was, so in STM in Connecticut, like, some mother, like, they were screaming to the coach, Coach! Play, display, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yo, you want to be, uh, like, become a coach? I don't know, like, if you know that well football. So that's very weird. In I take some blame from, for some of that, though, too. I had to have to say, because the, of the backfield that we had in high school, we were running some plays. I was like, hold on, time out. Just, just give Kyle or, or Jalen the ball. Just let him run. Yeah, but, like, I mean, like, that was, like, the big difference between, like, from friends and here, like, about parents. Like, yeah. parents very, or, like, people, like, brother, like father like here you know 
a lot about sports in France. Uh, family don't really care. Yeah. Like so, I born like in family like who do like a lot of fight sports. So it's different too. One thing I want to touch upon too. Will here, you've not mastered, but you practice what twelve arts, yeah, ten, ten, like Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu. I do like twelve to six, is six to eight. Yeah, six to eight. Yeah, I always make the joke in our household with even with Jose home and Will was here. Like if someone breaks into our house, God forbid, either leave or use the weapon you brought in for yourself because <laughs> we got some yeah. beasts coming that'll downstairs. Be, be <laughs> we got a kid who's six four playing at VT as a tight end, also you know knows the arts. So we should yeah. just give that person you know uh, a fair warning. All right, so so you were trading forex. Yeah, so I was trading forex because like so. One of my friends uh, do it, so he said, I can teach you how to do it, I can show you, blah, blah, blah. So I start to do it like for like six months a year. Yeah. So I make like my home money by myself. Nice. Um, nice. And at the end, I was good. So I can like buy some clothes, some stuff I like. So I help my mom a little bit. But so I always have like this mentality to save money or invest this money. So that's why I say, uh, I think. Like, um, depend of which kid. Like some kids already know how to save. Still, mm -hmm. if they never uh, have the money before, yeah. Like, because I'm like, oh, I'm from a family who don't have like a lot of money, so I just want to make money and make more money mm -hmm. before I spend my mon my own money. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's why it depend of each people. But after with college, everything was. With football, I take too much time, so I stop do forex everything because that take a lot of time. Yeah. All right. So, so what was this, uh? I mean, it's it's so in depth with this stuff. It's yeah. case by case basis. Uh, now NCAA now tackles the issue. <coughs> um, appropriate waivers if athletes have some opportunities. I mean, they're, they're talking about making money off the game that they're playing. They really don't talk about... You can bet. That's the point. You definitely mind. can't bet. That's the only point you... That's yeah, why. I know for a fact. You, you can not have a job. Can't you can't do, do Forex by yourself. But you cannot bet. Because if you bet... Because you're on already on the league. Yeah. So you can take someone and say, yo, make... Lost. Yeah. So... Listen, again, going back to what we're saying, it's a fine line. I still believe that kids should still get paid... It's a yeah. hard schedule, um, but again, listen. There's a fine line. If a kid makes two hundred grand, three hundred grand in a year, it's a lot of money for for a college kid. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. So there's got to be some kind of safety net, like I was talking about before, where the kid is put in the right path. Nick, I like your idea. I love real estate. I love syndicates. I like the multifamily. I think that's a great option to build wealth for these for these kids that are coming up. Because also, too, I mean, let's touch upon uh, one of your teammates. When Nikolai was uh, playing Montclair Cobras in eighth grade, um, you were down in Florida. Now you're playing with a kid who's on Virginia Tech when you were in eighth grade. He's on his eighth year, seventh yeah. year, yeah, which is Terrell. crazy. So he's married, right? No, he's not or married. Who's, no, you no. haven't married? Oh, you last have year we did. All right. But, yeah, Juice, is, uh, yeah, Juice has been there for a while. So, I mean, how does a guy like that provide? It's hard. It's yeah. super hard. Mm -hmm. So, again, I mean, a kid who wasn't accustomed to having money to have money. I it's it's a road that the NCAA and, and kids should not go down. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's also hard enough as a coach. Coaches, definitely. I'm sure you guys already had some guys come in, some financial guys, to explain to them the uh, the dangers of spending money. Have yeah, you guys had any yeah. guys come in yet? We had like a presentation on some like a financial yeah. advisor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't, know. I don't, I don't really. That stuff is weird to me. Yeah. But anyway, what else is going on? Anything else? Training. Will you want to touch upon anything? Any questions for us here in the states? <laughs> Pretty. I mean, you've been here now for you know, two years now, three years officially. Two, like two years. Two years now. Yeah. Was it was it hard getting you know used to the environment or is it pretty much the same? Uh, like because we watch all American movie in France, so yeah. just watching a movie, most of the time you you see the reality. Yeah. 
especially like f- comedy movie, like. I don't know if I can say <laughs> Ameri- American Pie stuff like this. Oh, that yeah, looked like yeah, American yeah. college, like yeah. the college l- life. I mean, poorly go to go to school, girls. So they they put French subtitles yeah. over American Pie. Oh no, they put like French language. Oh, language that's yeah. gotta be hysterical. Yeah, so it's just yeah. like yeah, that's funny. So I was used to it. I, I didn't was used to it to the countryside. Yeah. The now, countryside is weird. Is there any celebrities here that are big celebrities here, but not like, you know, the top guys that are huge over there back home? No, I feel like the big celebrity here is a big celebrity in France. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Because I, I know with um with some like influencers on Instagram, like mm-hmm. they become like famous in like uh, Bangladesh. Like they have like a following yeah, there and yeah. stuff like that. So I was curious to see if there's like anything like that, you know, with our celebrities in France. In but France, it sounds like no. the same. What about the food here? Food better here or no? Really? No, 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 no. France is way better for food. Interesting. First, because we have like the best country around us for like food. So we have Italy. So we have like the best pasta, best pizza. Uh, after we have like the Spain and Portugal. So you have like the, um, what do you call? I mean... To be fair, we haven't given them. We, tr- you know, that this is my, actually my fault. I take blame for this. We got to go somewhere. I mean, like, because like he's no, but still, like, I, I ate like some good place when I so when I was in Baltimore. So my coach, so there's no good food mm-hmm. down there. Come, come on, come on, on Willie. Oh I, I, I don't we know. After, to I don't know you. Out. Out. So I don't know like, <laughs> we if have it's a good to take them like, out. Baltimore. But I mean, but for me, from my experience so far, I feel, and yeah, I feel like. Fr- France still have the best food because, like, first we have like the best. France is known for like the culinary, for food, for wine, for everything, because we have True. like we True. have all the culture, like cl- the close culture from like Italy who came to France, opened like a traditional Italian restaurant in France. Yeah, in yep. US you have, but not a lot. I mean, yeah. like in France it's very like easy to like go any place and find. A good restaurant. So, so here's the thing. And well, I mean, immigrants did come here from. Yes, but here, that's what I want to talk about because people don't understand that it's Italian Americans. Yeah. Uh, or American Italian, like it's Italian, like we're we're not the same. Like the same thing with language. Like we're talking with uh, with at Brodor. So mm-hmm. it was cool to see that some people speak French, but it's mm-hmm. Canadian French. Yeah. It's not the same thing as as back home French. So the same thing is with the cuisine. Like we do things here that are different than Italy because we're oh not yeah. Italy. But I feel after is about also, also the quality of the food. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. Like the meat is cooked different. Like or like how the the cow is like treated Wait, yeah. before be killed yeah, 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 is yeah. different. So I feel everything is make like the food taste different too. Yeah. Yeah. Because in US it's like a lot about like make a lot. Yeah. Make a lot of food. So you have like to give like to the animals some stuff. I was mad because don't add. because mom made like lemon pasta, <laughs> and oh, that's yeah. not her sign. Like that's yeah, not. Uh, I I agree, mom. I like, love you to death. You, like it was a bad opener. It was a Ni- bad opener. Ni- <laughs> Nic- Nikolai was like, mom, come on. Yeah, it's it, bad. He he didn't taste any good food yet. It's like, go- it's not that it's bad. It's good, but when we have a oh, yeah, good. a guest. That's what I'm from saying. French, or from France. And, I, from and France. I've been speaking on Jersey food. Because yeah, in Virginia, there's nothing. So, wait, are you guys going back home this weekend? Yeah, Sunday. You guys going back? Uh, again, I, my fault for, you know, not taking you guys out. We got to go somewhere. Grant, I mean, you got, when you guys got here, Friday, I was kind of away. Saturday, I was away. Sunday, we all hung out. Yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll definitely Sunday go we got, we just ordered from Lakeside. We got buffalo chicken. Like, we, didn't, we don't have. Was Sunday the party or Saturday? I don't know, but anyway, we, we need a busy weekend this weekend. We need to go to an Italian restaurant with them. Yeah, yeah, because Friday we did we did something. I don't I can't remember. What, what, I don't know if we were out or whatnot. All of us. Saturday I went down to Princeton because Jake graduated. Yeah. So we wanted to go see the campus for the last time. We went to Root Steakhouse. Tremendous. I think my credit card's still there. I have to get, go get that back somehow. Um. And then Sunday, oh, you guys, we were at Ruth Chris's. Mm-hmm. You guys didn't come. Yeah, we didn't get invite. So, this this week before you guys, you guys Saturday leave on Sunday, night. Saturday. Hold up, is not Monday, the twenty third. <coughs> Salute. Let's find out. This went by quick. Yeah. 
swept by really really quick but you know anyway we'll we'll uh but, yeah. but like i thought the food no it's good but it's just different and after like 23rd the best the best wine after is like in france so yeah i mean we still have great wine i mean oh yeah like the california one i already drink some california wine from mm -hmm. here it was pretty good so here's what i love not like i'm not a big cab guy i like brunello from italy brunello from yeah so after yeah Tuscany. No, after italian one is yeah. good of yeah course. But I like that you're younger. You're younger than me. I'm still somewhat. I'm still young at 24. But I have a. I have a taste for wine. At your age, I didn't have a taste for wine. Oh, but you, you have, have a taste, taste for that wine. because like I'm like so. My mom's side, I've, I'm a big drinker of wine. So I really? never drink bad wine in my life. That's so like, I like when that. I drink, that's so cool. just like by smell, I can tell if it, it's gonna to taste good or not. I like that. That's and awesome. So one day that was it. Do yeah. They try to put. And I, I didn't test it. I just, like, drink. Yeah. And I was like, Ugh. That was, like, not good. Yeah. So we got to... Where will we take him? Yeah, well, I'm just about to say that. We got to make an itinerary. So we got to take him to the to the delis. My favorite delis. Belle Juvene, Montclair. Well, That's, yeah, because, no, like... Uh, we got to start there. The only New Jersey thing he's really tasted is the Taylor Hermann and Cheese. From All right. Oh, let's talk about that. What about that? That good or no? No, oh, yeah, that was good. To be honest. That was good. It was good. All right. no, we, well, we got it from Bagel, which not Bagel Box. Yeah. All right. So here's another argument that I have, and for the viewers and listeners watching that are from our area, here in Verona, New Jersey. I'm a Verona native. I've been here pretty much my whole entire life. There's a little bagel uh, joint down the road, down West mm -hmm. Orange, that uh, it's better than Bagel Witch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am confident enough to say that. Like honestly, I, for the bagel I eat still in France, yeah. The bagel here was better. Really? Yeah. Well, Interesting. That, okay, so that's a th because that's the go. American thing. Like, but I just want to touch upon this one more time so people understand. Bagel box <laughs> on Eagle Rock <laughs> Avenue. It's better than bagel. It's better than bagel, and it's not just because it tastes better. Also, the presentation is better because at Bagel Witch, they put this plastic around the bagel. First of all, they give too much cheese, so the whole all the cheese melts, and then they have that wrapping foil. It gets like, stuck on it. It mm -hmm. gets stuck on it. And I'm eating half paper. I agree. And if I'm busy in the morning, I don't I, like. Obviously, I'm gonna take the time to. to I don't have to. Ha I, don't, I shouldn't have to scrape it off my <laughs> my bagel. You go to Bagel Box, they just give the foil, nice presentation. It's easy. It's not covered in cheese, and it's better. That's all I want. Because here's say. the thing, like, so I've been bragging, you know, the pizza, pasta, and bagels. Yeah. Are my three big things that when we're in Virginia is what I when I brag about. Yeah. We go to New York. Dad, dad gets some random New York pizza down the street, and I'm like, "All right, we're making this kid think we have no food." Where'd you guys go? It was it was Benny, Ben's. Ben's, it, Ben's was so, pizza. it was on the. It was weird. It was weird. That's I what apologize. I'm, so as well, we gave him the bagel, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But we haven't given him mom's either mom's really good signature dish or just a good dish in general and pizza. Yeah. Like if we take him to Ralph's Pizza and Nutley. Mm. I mean, that might be the best pizza he's ever had because I don't know what pizza he's had. I, I gotta I have, say, I have so, a traditional so the, the, the top France. pizzas, I gotta say, Lombardi's is good. Ralph, bro, Ralph's. Lombardi's is good. So, my argument is when our uncle first opened up Lombardi's, you weren't, were you even born? You, you were just born. When? When Bert opened up Lombardi's. Uh, maybe, I don't know. The pizza was like Ralph's. It was closer to Ralph's than Didn't it is dad now. Make it? That was yeah. That was making pizzas there for a while, but I remember the pizza being just because when I I had never been to Ralph's until you came back like two times ago, or like a year and a half ago when Dave went there. Because I saw Dave review. Then we went there. I was like, I tasted them. Like it took me back to when I was a kid because it tasted like Lombardi's pizza. Yeah. So. But we have to like that's the thing. So he's only tasted the only signature thing in Jersey he's tasted is the bagels. So, we gotta take you to Ralph's. We'll take you to Lombardi's. So well, Lugo on Bloomfield Ave, the grandma pie is tremendous. My one of my favorites is Tony D's Montclair grandma pie. I asked Jake Paganelli about that thing. Every time we order food, he's like Tony D's. We're getting Tony D's right now. Call him. It's one of the best pizzas. Uh, I, I, I might have had it. So so we get those are the we, we got a lot of places to hit before we, you guys. So we checked go home. off the bagel. Bagels uh, are done. We pizza had, we pasta. Do the pizza. Uh, mac the best macaroni. I gotta be honest. If you give me so Gentili macaroni, which is from Napoli, is some of the best macaroni you could get. That's not fresh. So I gotta make him the, the Gentili cacio e pepe. 
Oh, you don't have me and ketchup pepe. You gotta. Well, I gotta it. make him that. Now, now I got the recipe. I I am a student of food, like I am with business. Mm-hmm. Maybe even more with food. So I I find the best ingredients and the best people that make the food, and I study them. So I get a lot of my recipes. Shout out to Steve Martorano down to Martorano's in Fort Lauderdale. Unbelievable. He's so he's he's a technically he's not a chef. He's technically a cook. Mm-hmm. He he started making sandwiches in uh, in Philly out of his basement. That's how he started. Now he's got five or six restaurants. I think he's he's on his sixth. And uh, the food I have I literally have not been there yet. I just follow him. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm planning on going with uh, Mike Daggett. We're going to take a day trip. He's he's going down. He's got a house down uh, down the shore for two weeks, and uh, we're gonna take like a day trip. We're gonna fly down for a day and come back. Okay. So yeah, but we gotta. So where are we gonna go for pasta? So so macaroni. I'm thinking. I mean, if we want the best, New York right now is hard because a lot of things are closed. Like we could go to New York macaroni wise. I'm trying to think of the of the the top place that comes off my the, the top of my head here. It's, it's tough. Yeah, we can make our own. That's that's what I'm saying. I, I think if I make my ketchup pepe with a gentili, you, you have to use pecorino romano cheese. If it's Parmesan Reggiano, get mm-hmm. the fuck out of here. I'll, I'll go home. I will leave. <laughs> if you if if I'm at somebody's house and you use uh, Parmesan Reggiano for ketchup pepe, I will pick up my phone and shit and I will leave. <laughs> Wait, the, so this so also too. I want to touch upon you know, Nucci's house every Friday for happy hour. You know, this this happy hour starts at five o'clock, but the hour lasts until two o'clock in the morning. We we you know that that whole group makes fantastic food. Mm-hmm. Everything's they're right from Italy. Like everything is perfect. Everything is prim and proper. So I'm used to having good food. So far, we haven't really given you the experience except for the bagels. So we got to think of a couple spots to to go to. Um, besides, I mean, we could still go back to the city. You guys, went, well, you guys went to the city back to back days. Yeah. So. City. If you guys were in the city, I mean, Johns and Bleakers, <laughs> tremendous. Johns and Bleakers, yeah, I was trying to go to it, but we didn't. And we just got random pizza from that. The the cheese, we'll lift it up the slice. It fell off. Oh, jeez. But um, what's for dinner? Because <laughs> me and Will were. I've been in the office all day. How, yeah, how the hell did I had a long ass leg day. Yeah, I wanted a big steak. Exactly. We could do steaks. So can we get that done? Tell tell Will about my steaks. Oh. Unbelievable. So I'll, here's the I'll thing, though. You need to cook it a little more this time. I want that perfect medium rare throughout. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Not, not the. Uh, well, it's still good regardless. I'll, I'll make you medium rare. All right. I you gotcha. have been. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. But yeah, I mean, uh, restaurant wise, let's pick up a uh, place for Friday. Let's pick, uh, pick get a place for Saturday. Um, I can I can get Ralph's. Whatever. You want to leave after this podcast? Go to Ralph's. Oh, I'll go to Ralph's. I'm taking the Ralph's. I'm, I'm dumb. dumb. I'm game. I mean, it's kind of this. Well, we can't eat there. Maybe you can now. No. No. So. All right. Well, we'll we'll figure something. Out. I mean, they don't deliver either, right? No. I mean, I can pick one up. I don't care. I just. We'll have you go pick it up then. I mean, just send me the bill. I kind of wanna. I kind of wanna do it tomorrow because I had a good workout today, and I feel like what, if I eat Tuesday. Right, Taste Tuesday. Yeah, yeah Taste Tuesday. All right, and I feel like if I eat pizza, I'm gonna like no, feel yeah, bad about. Tuesday, yeah, because yeah. yeah. we don't have training tomorrow, so. Oh, we don't. No, we, we can sleep. <laughs> I was. I, I died you guys need a break time. though. Like, like even coach that don't even touch a barbell, and what, the first day you guys are back, you guys are fucking throwing around weight already. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm not gonna not do what he says, cause it's just weird. It's like an awkward like. And then he's like, "What do you want to do?" And it's like, I, "I'll just do it." Yeah, it's it's become your guys' life now, football. And then, exactly. like, and then when he puts weight on the the sled, and you know so him or Steve does it, it's like I have to do it. So yeah. it's like mm-hmm. that's the that's the competition mindset right there. I, it was crazy because Dad was talking about this because what was the the race that went off uh, the horse race? Yeah, they this got weekend. Like, yeah, uh, this uh, what's it called? Not Churchill. Uh, Churchill Downs is the um, whatever the race is called. I am drawing a blank here, but. Dad was talking about how horses have, they're extremely competitive. And the reason why they run great races is because if they see a horse in front of them, they try to beat that horse. Yeah. And the reason why the horse in the, in the front lets up is because they can't see behind them. Yeah. They have like a, the vision. Like a they have tunnel eye. vision. That's yeah. crazy. Because I never understood eyes, that. 
the eyes is here and here. So they can only see like this. They, they yeah. don't see. And like at one point in the middle, like if you put that in the in, in front of him, he can see it. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So like they, they, they know they're winning, but they don't know how close the competition is behind them. And that's why horses overtake horses. We'll figure that out. Listen, I... So for, I have a question. <laughs> for, you, me. for you, is it sports like people who do like horses? Like, you know, yeah. like... Uh, yeah, I mean, so... So it, it's a rich um, thing to get into if you have a horse here, especially in New Jersey. I mean, everything here is expensive. It, it's expensive enough to live here. So if you have horses, you got dough, usually. Um, I have never seen a horse here because we live in Verona. So like, like you go out to like Burnsville, Harding, uh, places that have money, mm-hmm. Summit, that have fields, you'll see a lot of the horses there. Even the people like around here who have money, they'll go up to like Harding and mm-hmm. you know these places with, with horses, but... They, they don't really breed them, not too many here for racing. I mean, th- we have a um, uh, a racetrack for horses in the Meadowlands right by Giant Stadium. I call it Giant Stadium, whatever you want to call it, MetLife, um, where they race. So I'm sure there's a lot of horses that are, that are near uh, around here that, that are bred to race. But I don't think we have any horses that race in the Kentucky Derby, anything like that. No. They're, they're, basically, no way. they're basically here for uh, the uh, rich daughters. Daddy will buy, you know, a girl a horse and, you know. Daddy. But it w- it's cool, horse. though. It's cool, though, because, the, you know, uh, you get the horse. I guess you call it a pony. The little girl's little. Yeah. The, the pony's little. Mm-hmm. They all grow up together. <laughs> that's who, uh, who uh, the people who I know have horses. That, that's what happens. So. Wait, uh, where do you get your steaks from? Uh, to be honest, uh, I, I, I'm I lazy when it comes to that. I just go to Whole Foods and I get the, uh, the T-bone. Not T-bone, I'm sorry. The, uh, the bone and ribeye, the thick one. I think that's great. They also have dry age there as well. Mm. Um, I want to go try out the uh, the place. I don't know if it's called Greenpoint. I forget the name of the place, but this is where uh, Delmonico's in the city, they get their steaks from uh, in New Jersey. Delmonico's is the oldest restaurant slash steakhouse in Manhattan. I think it was like the first restaurant in Manhattan, Delmonico. Well, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll definitely do steaks tonight after that uh, heavy leg day for you guys, but... I think uh, we touched upon everything. We touched upon the uh, the path getting to where you guys are at now. You guys, again, like I said, are playing at the highest level at Virginia Tech, which is awesome to watch, especially being myself as an outsider. It's awesome to watch you guys. Um, and I'm excited to see Will. I mean, again, going back to the uh, to French playing American football, there's not many. So this kid to my right of me right here has a great chance of hitting the league. Um He's got all the skills and, and the knowledge. He's a smart kid. He speaks two languages. So it's going to be exciting to watch. I'm excited for this season. Uh, I, I love this summer, but I can't wait for, for September for NFL football, high school football again, college football. Mm-hmm. So uh, thanks for checking in. This is our first podcast. Also, too, like I mentioned, there's no name for this podcast. There's li- literally no name. We're here. The everything. Wait, wh- uh, what do you mean? The actual video title or like I know? Yeah, I mean, we're in the ideal Pauline studio right now, which is a weight loss clinic, but, you know, I put the studio together, so. You know what's weird? I had a great name for a podcast. I was sleeping, and I figured out a good name. And you completely forgot. Completely lost. It was such a great name. It was, I think it was like a saying. It was, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for tuning in, and... uh We'll bring someone on next because these two guys are going home this Sunday. To uh, one thing, I also want to say too: you guys are not having a summer, right? Probably you guys, not. you guys just go home Practice. now on Sunday, and it's just we'll see you guys on Christmas. So, exactly. you guys uh, are going back to work again, and uh, thanks for chipping in or chiming in, and uh, talk to you guys soon. We'll see you. Peace. See you.